Hi, I'm Melanie Batz, CTO at Hobio. Today, I would love to share with you a story. Once upon a time, in 21st century Wonderland, there was a young software developer named Alice. She was a developer, free software activist, daily using an open society named Eclipse. One day, the Queen of Earth, who was her manager, comes to her and asks for a tool. The queen wants to visualize and edit her Pokemon's collection, and she wants to be able to provide this tool to all the subjects of her kingdom in order to help everyone to manage easily their Pokemon decks. Then Alice went on the internet to search for a solution to create easily the graphical studios expected by the queen. She surfed on many different websites, discovering frameworks, tutorials, reading documentations, and one day she arrived in Sirius Land. It was at the time that Alice discovered that the Eclipse ID was not only a classical ID, but provides many ways to manage and visualize data. Alice learned the series principles. To create her own graphical tool, first, she needed to define her domain to specify the data she wanted to manage and their relationships. Then Alice has to define the mapping between her domain concepts and how she wanted to represent them graphically by creating a series configuration. And finally, she would obtain the graphical modeler expected by her queen. Alice was ready to start the development of her first graphical modeler based on Sirius Desktop. The first step for Alice was to discuss with the queen and her subjects to understand what they needed exactly to manage their Pokémon and what were all the characteristics they wanted to represent. She used EMF and Decor tools to represent her domain model explicitly and create the meta model. Then, she generated the corresponding Java implementation classes from her model. She defined a gen model file, which contains additional information for the code generation. After that, Alice generated the EMF editors. Thanks to EMF, it is really easy to do by generating the edit and the editor code associated to the meta model she has defined. After that, Alice had to test her plugins. And she could by starting a new Eclipse runtime instance with her new plugins editors dedicated to her meta model. Alice was able to create a model instance based on her meta model. She used the new wizard and the generated EMF editor to instantiate her new test model. At that point, Alice has defined her domain and she had an example model based on her meta model. So she was ready to create the graphical representations expected by the queen and her subjects. She specified with Sirius Desktop a new diagram, and she detailed different elements which must be represented on it. Alice was happy. Creating the domain and the modeler was easy and funny. She was thinking that she was almost there, but it was the moment Alice discovered that she has to package her application to distribute it to her queen and the subjects. So she created another project to create the update site at minimum, she could export the update site as a zip, but she decided to integrate the update site to her CI. And in the end, she uploaded the update site as zip on a server to share it with the users. As the queen and the subjects does not know anything about Eclipse, she has to explain 100 times how to download and install the Eclipse platform and how to get the Pokemon update site and to install it. Okay. Everyone has a running tool available on their own computer and can start to play with it. Alice got really positive feedbacks. The modeler was visual and exactly what the queen expects. But some people had some difficulties to install it and could not use it at all. Some others found bugs and others wanted more features. It was the time for Alice to go back to development to release a new version of her model. And here again, Alice went through all the steps to develop and release a new version and another and another and another, creating dozens of new versions of her tool over the years. At a point, Alice was beginning to get very tired of creating DSL graphical editors and of having too many things to do. Start Eclipse, describe a domain with the core, generate the EMF code, launch another Eclipse runtime, specify graphical mappings with Sirius Desktop, test with another Eclipse runtime, package everything to an update site, send it to Bob so that he can install it, help Bob we can't find how to install the modeler, reiterate from the beginning to update the tool according to Bob's feedbacks and needs. One day, Alice shared a situation with her friend, the Cheshire Cat. 
Alice said, I am going mad. Oh dear, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here, she asked. The Cheshire cat answered, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Alice prayed for a framework to easily create and deploy her studios to the web. The cat proposed to Alice to try a new framework named Serious Web. With Serious Web, Alice can create graphical editor deployed to the web. With Serious Web, Alice does not need anymore to use Eclipse for the domain definition and the series configuration. From today, she can do everything from her browser. Serious Web revisits the Alice journey. She still has to define the domain. For that, Serious Web provides a domain modeler, which can be used to create a new domain containing entities, entities which can be abstract. Each entity provides attributes and relations which permit to connect entities together. Then Alice can test directly her domain by creating a model instance. She just has to create a new model in Serious Web. Directly in her browser, she can define the representations she wants. To let finally her users play, she does not have to do anything to deploy the new modeler to her users. Serious Web does it automatically for her. And she can iterate again to refine her modeler according to the user's feedbacks. We keep only the productive steps to help Alice concentrate on what is important. Define the domain, create model instances for tests without pain, define the representations. And that's it. Deployment is automatic. The users does not need to, to install anything. Just go on the modeler URL from their browser. So now let's have a look to Serious Web in action and see live what Alice has to do to, to define a new graphical modeler. So I will just switch. to my demo now. OK, so first, we have the project browser. This is where you can see all the projects available in your server and create new ones very quickly. So I will create a new one. This one would be named Demon Studio. And I will create a new domain. And I will name it domain. OK, so to create my domain, I will use my domain representation. And first, I'm creating some entities. You see that automatically, I have some errors that appears in my validation view. This helps me to create a domain which is valid. So you see that two entities cannot have the same name in the same domain. So I will just update it to name it. This one would be my root concept. And this one would represent Pokemon trainers. OK, then I would need also to represent Pokemon. So I need species. I will name this one species. And I know that species and trainer should have a name. So I'm creating another entity, which would be named, named and which con contain an attribute name, which is a string attribute. OK, I don't want to instantiate the name, so I will make it abstract. And I will define that the species as super type named and that trainers, that trainers also as super type named. OK, so I need to create some more relation. My root element should contain my species. So I need to define that this one is a main containment relation. And I need also to create the same kind of relation for the trainers. I will name it trainers. I could define many trainers and its containment relation also. OK, so this is my simple domain. You can see it, it's named simple domain. And what I will do now is to instantiate so a new model based on this domain to try it. So I'm creating another project to test my domain. This one would be a Pokemon instance. And I will create a new model. In this new model, I could create a new object. And this time, I will select my new domain sample. This domain is automatically deployed by Serious Web. I have nothing to do. I can create new species and new trainer. So I will create a trainer. And you see on the right side, I have everything needed to 
update the attributes I defined in my domain. So I will name my first trainer hash. Okay, I could create the domain, I could create the model instance using my explorer and the details view, but I would like to prefer to create it thanks to a graphical view. So I will create a new model to create my new views. So I will create a view. This one would be a view definition. I create it. Okay. In this view definition, what I have here is a new diagram description. So I want to create a new diagram, which would be a Pokédex. And it would be possible to create a Pokédex on the root element of my domain. And the title by default would be Pokédex. It should be an auto layouted diagram. If I'm going back here now, if I go on my root element, and just re refresh my application, I will go on my root element, create a, try a new, try to create a new representation. I have my Pokédex one, and right now it is empty. Okay, I want to represent my trainer on my diagram. So what I will do is to go here, create a new node description, and in this node, I want, I will name it trainer. This is the description of my trainers. I want to map it to the trainer concept on my domain. And to get all the trainers, I will use the trainers relation, which is here. And I will use the name of the trainer, which is this attribute. OK, by default, my trainer will be represented thanks to a blue square. And that's it. So I refresh my diagram. And right now, you see my trainer is visible on the diagram, which is great. And one thing SeriousQuad does for me is that when I created the mapping, the node mapping, it automatically create for me the creation tool, but also so I could create many different elements, but also it creates for me the direct edit tool and also the deletion tool. So just by creating the mapping of the trainer, I have all these things for free. Okay, what I would like to show you also is that I could change the style of my element. I don't want it anymore to be represented thanks to blue square, but with this great icon. So I select the player one, I refresh it, and now you see that's a Nikon, a, a Nikon representing a little boy. Okay, but Misty is not a boy, it's Misty is a girl, so I would like to change the icon depending on the gender of my trainer. So I will create a new conditional style. Okay, and with this condition outside, what I will do is that I will change the condition and I will set that if the gender of my trainer is female, then I will represent her thanks to the player one icon. Okay, I will just show you here in the condition. I am using the probable gender service. This service is already deployed on my model, on my server. And what it is doing is just using the genderized API and giving it a name. The genderized API will um, send it back that it's a girl, it's a female or a male. So now if I am trying to refresh my diagram, you'll see that the gender API decides that Misty sh should be a girl. If I create a new one, if I rename her Alice, no, the API decides that Alice is a girl also. Okay, so this is a simple domain. And what I would show you now is a more advanced one. So I will delete this one and this one also. And I will upload a new one I already created before. Okay. So what we have in this domain, mostly the same. I just added some more attributes on the species and one on the Pokemon. For the views, uh, I added much more things. So uh, I still have my trainer with the probable gender conditional style. And I added also the possibilities to represent my species. A species is a container which contains a species element, which represents the weight, the height, and the moves of uh, the Pokemon. And you see that we represent this one with a list container. And then it's also possible to represent the Pokemon. And for the Pokemon, depending on their name, I am using 
a conditional style to represent them thanks to a different shape. Okay, so if we go back here, just create a new Pokemon instance model. I'm creating a new one. This time it would be an advanced Pokemon. And I'm creating my Pokedex. So now I could still create trainer and I can create species. In species, I can create Pokemon. You see that my species are using the list container and my Pokemon has a, sp a small Pokeball to represent uh, by default uh, a Pokemon species. Okay, when right now, until now, I just uh, use the default behavior of the tools. It's possible to override the behavior of the different tools. For example, here I will override the behavior of the direct edit for the species. I did it by creating a new rename species tool, which will call a specific Java service renamed Pokemon. This service is just using the Poke API and it will get the values for the height, the weight, and the moves according to the name of the Pokemon. And it will set the attributes height, weight, and moves of my model directly from the values from the API. Okay, so if I rename this one, for example, Pikachu, now you see that the weight, the height, and the moves are updated according to the Pikachu. If I using Snorlax, I will get another kind of uh, values. Okay, now I could also show you that I'm able to create a link between a trainer and a Pokemon. And what does it, how does it work? Just I decide to represent the link of the trainers. And I am just saying that I want to represent the link between the trainer and the Pokemon. And that's it. Okay, one last thing I want to show you. Right now, the default behavior to create a Pokemon is creating a, just a new Pokemon with a level set to zero. I want to override this behavior by creating a new Pokemon tool here. So I'm creating a node tool. And this tool will contain, will create still an instance of Pokemon because I wanted to create a Pokemon. So it will fill the Pokemon's reference, which is here. And by default, I want it to set the value level to 42. Okay, and so now, if I refresh my diagram, when I create a new, a new Pokemon, you see that now I have not a new Pokemon tool, but as I'm creating a create node tool, I did not rename it. You see my new tool, and when I use it, the Snorlax has a level to 42. So here in 10 minutes, thanks to Serious Web, I showed you how to create your own studio fully from the web without any pain to deploy. Okay, now we can go back to the slides. So I will just stop this sharing, and I will share my other, my slides. Okay, share the slides, it's here. Okay, so during the whole past year, we at Hobio continue to work with, to, to improve Sirius Web for Alice. We all allow the studio makers like Alice to specify if they want a diagram to be layouted automatically or not. And when a diagram is auto layouted, the user cannot move an element on the canvas. It is automatically positioned by the ELK algorithm. On another hand, without the auto layout activated, it is possible for the hand user to manage the elements freely on the diagram. The position of the elements is kept by Serious Web, and if she closes the diagram and reopens it, everything is still as expected. Compared to the first Serious Web release, you see that we had the capability to move elements on free layouted diagrams. You can move nodes, containers, and resize containers and resize nodes. We introduced also the incremental layout. When you move an element, the other elements give their seat to the new one in the area. For example, when you move a container close to another, the second one will move a little bit to stay visible. And it works also for nodes and for newly created element in the diagram. Another small feature we developed about layout is the arrange all action. Thanks to it, your diagram elements will be relayouted automatically thanks to ELK. 
Okay, it just shows you that it will be relayed like this. Okay, based on Thales experiments, also, we started to work on the APIs to make them more generic. Our purpose is to make serious web applications able to work with more technologies and schema definition and, just, and not just TMAP. You'll be able to come with your data structure and use serious web to create representation and graphical editors for your domain. The previous work led us to a first step about component integration. We are now able to integrate the serious components in any web application or in cloud IDs as in VS Code or TIA. To understand how we integrate Serious Web with VS Code and TIA, you should attend Axel Richard and Stefan Begodo's talk, 0 to 1, How to Integrate a Graphical Editor in a Cloud IDE, tomorrow afternoon. Another thing we did for Alice, we introduced form-based editors. Relying on the same concepts as the Properties View mechanism, it allows you to create forms, which are really popular in web applications. It reuses the Properties View DSL you are used to work with in Sirius. You can define a form description, which will contain pages with groups and widgets. We integrated this year many different kinds of representations. With the support of the CEA list, we provide the, we proved and we provide the possibility to use Blockly, which is a library to add an editor that represents concepts, but has interlocking blocks. We integrated also D3 representations like the force directly tree. It will show you the force directly tree like this. Okay. And the zoomable circle packing to navigate into modal elements hierarchy, for example, or a tree map. So with Serious Web, it is easy to integrate classical web library to map your concepts to a more appropriate visualization depending on what you want to highlight. We also provide the first support for dialogues. You can now specify in your service configuration that you want to use a select dialog to select a semantic element before the execution of the tool. And finally, we add the validation capability. You are able to contribute validation rules to your model, and the, the user can launch a validation on his model, and Service Web decorates the semantic elements with error markers accordingly. As you see, Service Web is a very active project, and we add lots of things during the past year. For the next releases, we have many work in progress development. So we are working on supporting unsynchronized diagrams with all the associated features as multiple selection and drag and drop from the model explorer also. And we are also on the path to integrate a magic connector. You click between two elements in the diagram, it proposes the different possible relations according to what you want to connect. This, all these enhancements will be available in the next release. We have done some experiments also for the future to integrate also table representations. And we proved also the possibility to integrate X-Text editors with Serious Web. So if you have a few things to remember after this, after this presentation. First, remember that Serious Desktop is a reliable framework for the one who wants an Eclipse-based modeling tool. Serious Web is the newcomer and has proven its capabilities in many cases. You can have a full web experience to describe your domain, your views, and for deployment. The runtime backend is mature and ready to use in production. The OBL Cloud Platform is there when you have enterprise studios to develop. It provides enterprise features to ease the live collaboration, for example. And to finish, we are looking for contributions, interested parties, and sponsoring. Get in touch directly with me to discuss that. And this is the end of the Halley story. Well, this is not really the end. No, it's your turn to give it a try. Two solutions. You can run it by yourself, go to GitHub, get the source code, or easier, you can test our free sandbox. You can test all the features I showed you before. You just have to fill in the sign-up form and we will send you an invitation. Thanks for your attention. If you have any question, do not hesitate. So the first question is, can I also use my EMFIC or O design models directly, or do I have to define in the web? So you can do both, in fact. Um, we, we develop a compatibility layer in order that if you already have an existing serious desktop application, you can reuse the O design you already defined and the different services and the EMF meta model you have in order that you can just use them in serious web. Uh, the main difference is that we do not rely anymore on the Eclipse platform. So if you have services that will call at a point some service platform 
code, it will just not work and you have to redo it for the web. Okay, the second question was, where are stored the position of the elements, server side or client side? So everything is on the server side and um, you can share, you can, I did not show that during the demo, but you can download the, um, the files, you can download the projects, which is, which will contain the models and the file. And so you'll be able to share the different models, the different diagrams, the different representations with uh, any kind of, uh, with all your users. The third question is, is it possible to contribute di diagnostics to the validation section for our domain models? Definitely, this is exactly what we did for the domain uh, modeler. You see that um, the domain modeler uh, for us is just a DSL like another. And so we're providing some validation on the server side in order that you, when the user uses the domain modeler, you have some validation according to what we expect. So for example, that uh, two entities have not the same name and so on. So this is definitely possible. The first question is there, is there a Docker container for testing quickly locally serious web? Yes, we provide that also. Um, it's really easy for you to test serious web. You can go on the GitHub uh, source code um, repository. And here is, there is a kind of readme. And in this readme, you can just use a Docker container. Five, five question. Okay, Ooh, this one is a long one. <laughs> is this using the same underlying domain view configuration as Serious Desktop? Can we just reuse the domain view definition done in Serious Web to have an editor working in Serious Desktop and vice versa? And what about the model diagram instances? Can I open a diagram done with Serious Web in Serious Desktop? And finally, do we define domain editor once in Serious Web and Serious Desktop and then run the describe diagram editor everywhere via Scored Eclipse and Desktop? Okay, so the idea is that if you already have something which you develop with Serious Desktop, we have a compatible layer in order that you can go to the web. Um, if you have nothing, you can directly start from the web. That's okay. Um, and you can so define your domain thanks to the new capabilities uh, in Serious Web. Define your domain thanks to the old way to do it with EMF and uh, with Serious Desktop. That's okay also. Um, but the idea is that you should not mix both. So you can have in you, know, you can have in the same modeler some um, some modelers that are coming from whole design files, some that are coming from the web the new web way to to contribute modeler. That's okay. Um, the idea in the hand is do not define it um, with serious web. Uh, no, what I want to say is that if you define something in Serious Web, you will not be able to use it in Serious Desktop. The compatibility layer, the compatibility layer is just in one way. So you can go from Serious Desktop to Serious Web, not from Serious Web to Serious Desktop. Um, and about the instances, so the instances are classical files. You can just serialize them to XMI. And so we use this file. From, if you create files from the web, you'll be able to download them as XMI file and reuse them and reopen them with Serious Desktop. So this is possible. Um, and the last thing of this question was about uh, VS Code and Eclipse Desktop. So as I said, you can just, uh, we, we provide a new um, way to integrate the different components to of Serious Web 2, VS Code or Eclipse here. So that's definitely possible if you describe a domain using the web application, it will work for VS Code and for CIA at the same time. You have a talk uh, tomorrow for that. You do not hesitate to attend it to, to have some more details about that. There is another question. Is the will define your domain, deploy, and use it part of Serious Web? Yes, definitely. This is open source and it's a part of Serious Web. It's yet it's still yet experimental. So do not hesitate it to, to test it and give us uh, our feedback. It would be really great for us to get some feedback about that. Uh, last question, when can we expect the integration of Xtext Editor? So this is coming, it's uh, still experimental and uh, I expect that it will be done for the end of this year. Thanks, and uh, so I have to leave you now. Thanks everyone, bye.